Welcome to Life Learnings. My name is Paul Kachansky and you're listening to 3ABN Australia Radio. Today we have Liz and Leah in the studio. Liz, mother? Yes. Leah, daughter? Yes, that's me. <laughs> Welcome to 3ABN Australia Radio and thank you for coming and sharing your story. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you very much. Now this story is a long story that happened back in 2014 approximately, right? Yes, that's right. Um, and we don't have time for the whole story, but just give us a, a brush stroke. What happened? Maybe we'll start with you, Liz. Yes, well, back in 2014, Leah was um, off to Costa Rica for um, about nine weeks mm-hmm. to go to a health yoga retreat up mm-hmm. in uh, Rio Chiripo, which is the highest point there. Mm. Beautiful outlook, beautiful setting. So I guess she was on the adventure of a lifetime, but... Of course, it wasn't to be what she set out to do. God had other plans. What happened, Leah? Well, originally um, I was there to heal myself of a disease um, called ulcerative colitis, which is to do with your bowel. Uh So I didn't go to the doctor. I thought I'd go the natural way, and this was my natural way, to go over to Costa Rica and do what's called a water fast. So that's why I went. it, there's a long story behind that, but that's what I ended up doing. Went there and did a 25-day water fast. Just eating nothing but just water? Just water. Oh, wow. 25 days is serious. Yeah, it was... Uh, this is not recommended to our listeners. No. This is uh, just your story. It's just my story. Yeah, and it's a true story because it happened to you. So then what happened? So while I was doing this water fast, I got extremely ill, mm-hmm. Um Worse than what I was when I first went there to heal myself, um, I contracted a, an infection from the water. Wow. And they didn't know that I had this infection, the, the person who was running the retreat. Um, so he was just telling me I was going to get better and this and that. But you were not feeling better. Well, not feeling better. So it was quite serious. I uh, Obviously, I'd lost weight from fasting, but I was losing so much weight. And when I started eating again, I was still losing weight because I was just having diarrhea and throwing oh. it up and I was just not gaining any weight. Wow. Um, so my mum had come over there to do the last part of the retreat with me, but she found me in a very, very um, dire situation. So Liz, when you when you jumped off the plane and, and met your daughter, yes. what, hap- what was going through your mind? Well, a lot went through my mind because the trip from San Jose, Costa Rica, to Rio Chiripa is about a five-hour drive. Uh-huh. So in that five-hour drive, I, I was just churning over, was she okay? I knew she wasn't well. We'd had um, some contact through Viber. Uh-huh. And uh, when I got there, I didn't see Leah. I only saw other people in this foyer area. And that concerned me. And I, and I could see them all looking at me. And the guy there that was running it said, oh, you're Leah's mum. And he was very positive, very out there. And I thought, oh, Leah must be OK. He's very, you know, uh, happy, jovial. And then somebody said, somebody better go and get Leah. Her mum's here. And I turned around and all I could see was this frail frame of what huh. was my daughter. Wow. So what happened? So mum, we embraced each other. I was very emotional, so was she. I just sort of fell into her arms and was just so happy that she was there. Um, I just Mm. needed my mum. Of course. So fast-forwarding, really, she got me out of there. That was the end of the story. She got me out to hospital because she knew I needed medical attention. Of course. Um, And they tried to stop us from leaving. They they seriously thought that I was okay, but that wasn't. And Mm. so my mum got us out of there. We made a... The trip to um, the private hospital, it was a very, very nice hospital there. Mm -hmm. And um, I got admitted into ICU for Mm -hmm. three days. Mm -hmm. And um, in hospital, I went through uh, another battle, Mm -hmm. um, a spiritual battle. And I was Mm -hmm. attacked by Satan in hospital and he tried to take my life by... Yeah. Now you weren't you weren't delusional because you hadn't been eating for for twenty five days. No. This was a real battle that you. This was a real battle. You experienced. Yes. Were yes. you a Christian at this time? I was brought up in the Seventh Day Adventist home from a child, but I left. I'd left the church by age about thirteen or fourteen, hmm. so I got involved in um, off just stuff when I was a teenager. Uh, I still had beliefs about God, um, but I wasn't. Um, no, I wasn't in the church. Didn't have God in my life at all. But for some reason, you got attacked in hospital. Now, Liz, what was going through your mind at this stage? Um, well, Leah, when we got to the hospital in um, in the emergency department, 
a lot was going through my mind because I knew Leah was fighting for her life. But I also knew God was there with me. Uh, there were miracle after miracle after miracle just for us to get to that hospital. And I remember when we were in the emergency department, there was a lady there watching everything that was unfolding. You could imagine the chaos in yes. this emergency department. There were people everywhere. And when I got there, my heart sunk. I thought, we're not even going to get in here today. Or if we do, she'll be dead by the time they see her. Wow. But they realised how serious the case was. So they actually rushed us in straight into the emergency department. Mm-hmm. Um Leah was so dehydrated from um, the vomiting that they were unable to get a vein and she'd lost a tremendous amount of weight. She was only about 35 kilos. And so you can imagine her veins were nothing. Yeah. Um, after several several minutes, I think 15, 20 minutes, uh, there was one nurse that persisted and did find a vein. Mm-hmm. And, of course, um, I have mentioned this before, but I feel it's so important to me that I mention again that yep. I went out of my way to find this nurse and I thanked him and I asked him what his name was and he said his name was Gabriel. And I knew Gabriel. then, yes, Gabriel. Now, that's a Bible name. That's, that's a Bible name for an angel. It's, that's right. It was uh, Gabriel that came and helped Daniel in the book of Daniel. Yes. And I remembered that and I recalled that and I remembered how... Um, Gabriel lifted Daniel up when he was face down and I thought I'm face down here, I'm in a crisis so when Leah was in in ICU she was in, after she was in emergency she was then transferred to ICU intensive care where she stayed there for three or four days and then she was transferred to a ward and it was that night that Leah's just referred to Mm. where Satan where Mm. Satan and his demons So I was already out of ICU, I was already well enough um to be put on a normal ward. So I'd come out of like the the worst of it as far as they were concerned. Uh And I I still was very weak, um, still wasn't even walking properly. Were you eating much? I wasn't eating much, but I was eating uh, because they were hydrating me with fluids. So I was at least retaining some, you know, nutrients. And as far as that concerned, I was... um, Mum was wheeling me around in a wheelchair, but Mm. I was still, you know, making progress. And at this this stage, you were approximately how old? Uh, 25. 25. Yeah. So at, at a, a fit 25-year-old can go through a lot, mm. but you were pretty low. I was low, <laughs> very low. They were the, I was the worst case of dehydration that ever seen. Wow. I had renal failure. I had sepsis, wow. um, heart failure. This uh, is serious. Yeah. So you were you were not just a casual ho- hospital visit. I mean, yeah. this was this was pretty close to not pulling through. Yeah, no, that's right. It was very Because once your serious. kidneys fail and all the other things happen, yeah. as you mentioned. So what happens with this? You mentioned this, this spiritual attack. Mm. Would you like to elaborate on that? So, like I said, I was in the room with mum on a normal ward. She wasn't allowed to really see me in the ICU for very long Uh because it's only visitation. Yeah. So she was able to stay in the room with me that night. I was quite excited because I'd been sort of lonely Mm. in the hospital and I was like looking forward to having mum there Mm -hmm. next to me. She had a little pull-out sofa. So we were going to sleep that night and for some reason... I was drifting off to sleep, and then I had this terrible sense of panic come over me. All just, of a sudden. All of a sudden. I just felt like hmm. I actually was concerned about my mum. I had this guilt that she wasn't sleeping for some reason because I knew she'd ever since she got to Costa Rica, she'd be looking after me, mm-hmm. and she hadn't been resting, and I was just mm-hmm. worried about her for some reason. I was just really worried about her. And I sat up, and I said, Mum, are you are you asleep? And she's like, no, Leah, I'm, I'm going to sleep. And that just catapulted me into a full-on panic attack, well, what I thought was a panic attack. Mm-hmm. And this I've, is the first time it's happened to you? Yeah, I've never felt like that before. Mm. My heart started racing. I, I just started thinking all these terrible things. And mm. um, and then I just went into a, a trance. I, what I, I thought, I need to like ring... A, like a dream? Well, I just sat there with my eyes staring blankly and rocking myself backwards and forwards. And my mum couldn't... She was looking into my eyes and there was no one there. It was pretty... What was going yeah. on? I kept trying to get Leah's attention and I was saying, Leah, Leah, look, talk to me. And I was trying to get a conversation happening. I said, do you want to ring Josh? Josh was Leah's fiancé and he was in Australia. Mm. And um, she said, yes. And so I'd ring Josh and, and Leah wouldn't respond. Josh was on the phone saying, Leah, talk to me, talk to me. And she just wouldn't. How and long then, did this go for? Oh, probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. I literally could not speak. Um, I knew Josh was on the other end of the line, but I just couldn't say anything. 
And it was you, like my voice was gone. And you felt this was a, a spiritual attack at, yeah, at this point? Yeah, at this point I was, um, I felt like I'd been given something um, and my heart was just, like my mind was just, oh, it was, I don't know how to explain it. But I do remember it was a spiritual battle because just before that happened, I told mum Jesus was coming back. For some weird reason, why would I say that? Like, why would you say she, that? She said, no, no, Leah, he's not coming back today. And I said, no, no, he's coming back right now. And it, this is just it was just really weird. weird. I mean, we know that Jesus is coming back, no doubt about it. Yeah. But I, I was saying that he was coming back that night. Yes, Leah was convinced that there and then he was coming back and that she was lost eternally. And that you could possibly die, maybe. Yeah. So what happened? What did you guys do? So after that... Um, the devil was putting into my mind terrible, like that I was lost eternally, that I was I was in hell. He was actually like that was in my mind, and um, I was seeing I was halluc- not hallucinating, but I was seeing things um, like the cross and um, the rainbow. All these things were false; they were never true. Huh. Like there's all no, these doubts. All these doubts were just um, and just randomly like why would I be thinking th- these things? And then I went into a rage, and I was really angry, and then I was became uncontrollable. Huh. I was like an animal, like I was just in all these positions and, you know, screaming out things. and yeah, um, she was screaming out so loud that the man in the room next door came in really aggressive and saying, you know, you need to stop this woman screaming out. And she was yelling out and there were six, hmm. about five or six nurses, male nurses, that couldn't even hold Leah down. And she got her body into what I can would call a figure eight position Mm -hmm. and then she got her head through the bar the railings of the hospital bed and bit her she got her teeth and latched onto my stomach and took a big chunk out of my stomach and Mm. and it got it was yeah it was really I knew we were in a spiritual warfare and I knew it was demons so what did you do at this point called out to Jesus that's the only safe answer isn't it absolutely in the name of Jesus. And there is power in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, isn't, yeah. isn't there? Absolutely, He's the only yes. one that can help us. He's the only one that's strong enough to defeat Satan and his demons. So, Leah, at this point, you, you had no idea what was going on, or did you I know? was lost. I, I, my you mind was just, um, completely, I was lost control of myself. I wasn't even myself. So what did you do? You prayed out to Jesus, and what happened? Prayed out to Jesus, and um, this battle went on for probably a couple of hours there were many catholic this was a catholic hospital we were in by the way Uh and they came in with rosary beads and water and oil and they were throwing it around the room and they were trying to be helpful oh very much so very much they understood what they were they knew what was going on yes they did and um we were in there for a couple of hours and then they felt that leah was um a danger to herself and a danger to me and to the nurses. So they transported us into another room, which was a like a padded cell. Hmm. like It was on the psychiatric ward. Hmm. I was yes. put into the psychiatric ward. They'd given me um, heavy um, sedatives to try and calm me down, uh-huh. but it wasn't working because they had to give me a, like a numerous um, shots of uh, injections. Wow. And at this point, I'm very weak and frail. And those could have I easily um, put me into a coma in my condition, yeah. but they didn't. But the just, you know, nothing can, um, you know, the demons that were in me were very stronger than the, any of this yeah. medication. Yeah. But they did put us into this padded cell. And mum, you can tell what happened. Yeah, what happened next? Yeah. Well, they didn't want me to go into the padded cell with Leah. Mm. Um, it was, you could only see out a little bit of the, a window um, between the padded cell and the nurse's Mm -hmm. station the rest of it you couldn't see out to any light or anything it was 11 o'clock at night by this stage Mm. so I was absolutely exhausted Mm. but there were three things I took when I went over there and one was the bible one was the ministry of healing and one was the great controversy okay so what's the ministry of healing that's a book that's a book okay and the great controversy is a book as well so you took three books with you yes okay I took them in with me and also my hymn book my hymnal. Okay, so you got four books. I had four books and I took them into the padded cell with me and I was on this thin mattress and Leah was so heavily sedated um, that I knew that we were still in a warfare. Yeah. So I got my hymn book out and I sang hymns all night. Wow. All night. I sang every hymn hymn that I could remember and the tunes and because I remembered reading that singing hymns and praising God, the an- the evil angels flee because they hate they hate the fact that Jesus is isn't, being praised. Isn't that amazing? Mm. So 
if you're going, if our listeners are going through some difficult stuff, yes, mental stuff, sing praises to Jesus. There's some musical uh, programs that are on three ABN. Mm. Join in that singing, get some good quality Christian music. Yeah. Mm. So, Mum noticed. Um, that so, what happened after you sang? Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, Mum noticed that I was, um, I was still murmuring things, but I was very like subtle with it all but she said that I a peace came over me when she mm. started singing you noticed yes. this pe- yeah. yes because she went into into she went to sleep and she went into a deep sleep because she started to you know I could hear her sighing in her sleep like wow. she you know when somebody takes that breath of yeah just it's like it's just a relax yes and you saw that on your daughter yes I did now Liz isn't that amazing because we refer to a story in the Bible where there was a similar kind of evil spirit in the king and David, Hmm. as a shepherd boy, came with his harp and would play. Hmm. And what happened? The The evil evil spirit ran away. Hmm. They just flee away. Hmm. And that's what happened to you. This this Hmm. was... It happened in your life. Yes. So praise God for that victory. Yes. yes. Amen. Praise God for that. Absolutely. That's amazing. So you fell into a, a calm sleep mm-hmm. and you kept singing. I kept singing. And it's funny, I, I, by this stage I hadn't slept for days, but it's amazing when you're praising God that he just gives you that strength and that ability yes, to yes. be able to keep going. Yes. And, I, and I was claiming promises from the word of God, remembering that in Isaiah, you know, he said that he'll raise you up, he'll make you strong, you know, he'll mm. bear you up on eagles' wings. Beautiful. And, and that's exactly what I claimed. And, and so I you believe claimed those promises? Yes, I believing. claimed, yes, believing and claiming them, absolutely, in the wow. name of Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Mm. And that's not the end of the story. No. <laughs> no, that's just the beginning. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going with the story. So what happens next? So the next morning I obviously wake up Yeah. and I knew what had happened. I didn't know the details of the way that I'd bitten my mum. I didn't know any about that, anything about that. But I knew that something had happened to me. I knew that there was a spiritual side of it. And they let me out of the psychiatric ward. Uh-huh. Um, they didn't think I was crazy, uh, which was that's, good. That's always nice. Yeah. Um, we, I end up going home a week later. Uh-huh. So um, back to Australia. Back to back home to Australia, and I thought I was better by this stage, like from this ulcerative colitis that I had uh-huh. originally. Um, so I come back home, and I know that God delivered me, but I still didn't know God yet. I He saved me, but I still was. Um, sort of ignorant in the fact that his great deliverance had really had just happened. Had just happened because I was still, yeah, unsure about everything. But I knew that I'd been saved, but I didn't know the magnitude of it yet. Yeah. But it sort of wanted me to find out more. Like mm-hmm. if these demons are real, then God must be real. Because how can I have got out of that? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I still had some things that I wanted to come back to Australia and do, one being triathlons. I was always wanted to do them. So I had this goal in my mind. Uh-huh. I'm going to do these triathlons because yeah, you, I'm better now. You, but you just came out of, ser- out of I know. serious hospitalisation and you want to run a triathlon? Are you crazy? Yeah. Well, not, not straight no. away, but I thought <laughs> that I'm better now that I can start doing it. But God yeah. had other plans for me. What were those plans and how did you find them out? Well, as soon as I got back to Australia, I ended up back in hospital again. <laughs> oh, um, no. In Mar- We got back in February. I was um, admitted into hospital in March, and um, the Lord was teaching me. He was teaching me to what was important in life. Mm-hmm. And I started um, a friend, uh, heaps of people coming to visit me and giving me book- books, and yeah. I started reading the Bible again. Um, well, started reading the Bible for the first time, really. Uh-huh. Um, now, you've been raised a, a Christian yeah. as, a, as a teenager growing up. Yeah. Was this all new for you? Yeah. Some things were new? Well, I mean, we always had worship. We always had, I always, I knew all the stories in the Bible, but I hadn't like heard them since I was like a young, young person, a young girl. So when I started reading the Bible stories again, I was just like, wow, I remember this story. I remember about Moses and the Noah and, yeah. and it was just amazing. Like I was actually you're interested. An, you're an adult, yeah. but you were reading it. Yeah. From a fresh perspective. From a fresh perspective. And it just came alive to me. I was just couldn't get enough of it, really. Wow. I was just loving it. I and mean, this was in hospital that I started reading my Bible. So you're again. sitting in hospital reading the Bible? Yeah. Now, the Gideon Bibles, they, they put them in hotels and hospitals. Mm. So if you're yeah. traveling, get that Bible out. Yeah. yeah. If you're in hospital, get that Bible out. Yeah. So it, was yeah. Very, it was very new to me, um, but it was just I was just loving it. What made you pick up the Bible? Um... 
I just wanted, I just had a desire to really to, I don't know, the Holy Spirit obviously just drew me to it. Just, was it curiosity? Was curiosity, it, yeah. Was it like, I don't know, I'm just trying, trying, to, trying In, to find the answer because like not everyone just picks up the Bible one day well, and says, I'm going to read Well, I guess because this. of what happened to me just, you know, yeah. it was that, yeah. that fact that I wanted to know Jesus, my Savior. At that time, I didn't know that it specifically, but now I look back at it, it was what I was trying to find out. What what was this? did this all mean for me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Liz, what happens at, to your life at this point? You see, you see Leah growing in her spirituality. Yes. What's happening in your life? Well... The same was happening for me too because I was there and mm. I'd, I, I've always believed and I go to church and but there's a big difference between knowing about God and knowing God. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, a lot of people might have known the story about Moses or Noah or that's knowing about him, but to know him mm. is to love him. Yes. And I had a desire then because I knew how much he loved us after delivering us the way mm. he did mm. that I thought... I want to give him my life in a positive way and wow. I want to be able to do, to be able to serve him and so it was driving me to the to my bible driving me on my knees and really we needed God we need him we need him every day yes. and seeing Leah still suffering you know I'd be visiting her every day in mm-hmm. hospital taking food and one of the highlights of the day there would be we would have worship in the hospital we would pray wow. together Yes. Well, this is so, 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 just before we go on, sorry. You're both having a refreshment or a, what's the word I'm looking for? A rejuvenation in your spirituality? A drinking, revival? A, a revival. A revival but, in your uh, spirituality? A revival for mum, but it, it was almost a start for me. Um, because it, when I was a child, I never, to feel like I never had that connection with God. Wow. But and it was definitely was, a revival, I guess. Yeah. This was like really growing mm. in your understanding and your relationship with Jesus. And I saw my need. That's That was the one thing that yeah. I realized now. I saw my need, that I needed him. Yeah. I needed him um, for healing and I needed him because if without him, like you said, we're in a spiritual warfare and we don't. And now I realize that. Yeah. that um, and it's just a scary thing. Without God, it's a scary thing yeah. to, to, to deal with that. Mm. So mm. in hospital, I um, spent... Yep. Um, in the John Hunter, was admitted there twice um, in March because they let they they discharged me, but I was still not well enough. But uh-huh. so I went back in there. Um, then we I ended up getting admitted to the San Hospital in in April, and um, I was just really struggling. But God was helping me all all the way along. Yeah. He yeah. was there with me. We'd we'd spend a lot of time praying and mm, um, a lot of time praying. Yeah. Yes, in and out of hospital and all this. I guess you look at 2014 mm-hmm. as a very um, a year where there was a lot of ups and downs yeah. because we'd gone through that real battle, that spiritual battle in Costa Rica. But when we came back to Australia, it wasn't over. Mm-hmm. And the devil was really at his hardest to yeah. try and discourage and bring us down wow. with, with Leah's health because Leah's health was still failing. And when she was admitted to the SAN... Um, it, it was it was a wonderful time there really too because mm-hmm. I, I love the fact that I could go to that the Bible bookshop there and I'd go and buy Leah books and I'd take them to her room and you know we'd read them and we'd be, absorb them and it was like we were drinking from the fountains of living water. Wow! Yeah. And that was so real. The Bible became alive even while for both of you for both of us. Yes. And and isn't that encouraging that mother and daughter mm. were reading the Bible from a totally different perspective, different need, different journey in life, but reaching your heart and reaching your heart. Yes. It was amazing. I wow. think it's been a real amazing journey as a mother and daughter to experience this together. And it's really drawn us closer together um, in our relationship yeah. uh, because now we have Jesus at the center of our family. And it's just it's just been really special, I think, yeah. for mum as well. Uh, I know that we've enjoyed a lot of time you know, in the word together. Definitely. Look, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to speak more with Leah and Liz. So don't go anywhere. If you have any questions or comments in relation to today's program, you can call 3ABN Australia Radio within Australia on 02 4973 3456 or from outside of Australia on country code 61 Two four nine seven three three four five six, 
Our email address is radio at 3abnaustralia.org.au. That is radio at the number 3abn Australia, all one word, dot o-r-g dot a-u. Our postal address is 3ABN Australia Inc. PO Box 752, Morissette, New South Wales 2264 Australia. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. For those of you that have just joined us, we are speaking today with Leah and Liz. Leah, in her search for ulcerative colitis treatment, left Australia, went to Costa Rica, went to a health retreat. You left that place feeling worse than when you arrived. Yes. You got attacked spiritually. Yes, in the hospital, yeah. You mentioned when you had a break that you had anointing. What does anointing mean? So when I was in hospital, I... um, I actually got readmitted in December 2014 and yeah. I spent my longest time there in that hospital for three weeks and I wasn't getting better. Uh-huh. Uh, I was really still um, struggling with my health. I had had four or five blood transfusions and about six or seven iron infusions and things mm. just weren't looking good. My yeah. inflammation was just skyrocketing. Mm. I was on the highest level of high hydrocortisone. I was being fed through a bag, like through a tube, because mm. um, I couldn't, uh, it, was just, it was just really bad. I couldn't Seriously? get any nutrients in because my bowel was just losing oh, it all. Wow. wow. So... We were sort of running out of options, really, because they'd given me all the medications, Mm. nothing was working, and we were really praying, obviously, also. But then my mum had mentioned getting anointed, and I, at the time, didn't know much about it, but I read into it and saw that it's from the Bible. You know, Mm -hmm. it says in James that when a person is sick, that Mm -hmm. you get the elders of the church and Mm -hmm. the pastor to come pray, and you can anoint them. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of... So it's like a small ceremony. Yes. 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 That that asks God to intervene yeah. in his wisdom. Yes. Is that right? Is that is that the summary of it? Yeah. Yes. So what what happened? So you, you, you got specifically the you specifically ask for healing, but it is a, a very sacred service. It is. Oh. It's not just you really have to surrender everything. And is that what you did? I have to, I did that. So you knew that this was like God, I'm just Yeah. And I hadn't even been baptized wow. at this point. Um I was still on my journey. It'd been a year, um, nearly a year since I'd been attacked spiritually because it was in December now. Uh-huh. And so I'd on the, along the way, I'd um, been through an evangelistic series, um, watched these DVDs, and I'd gotten a lot more knowledge about the Bible and was really on fire for God. Um, but I hadn't got baptized yet. But mm-hmm. we were on this journey with Pastor Danny Milenkoff, mm-hmm. who was my pastor, who took me through Bible studies. Mm-hmm. He's been on 3ABN Radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good, hasn't he? He is, really. <laughs> he's been a blessing to our family. Wow. Um, God's really used him in our family. So you heard his presentations? Well, not his presentations, but he took me through Bible studies. I actually heard Leo Shreven's um, evangelistic DVD set that he had. Okay. So, so, so you went through deeper Bible study with Pastor Danny? Yeah. And at this point, you thought, well, it's, I'd like to get anointed for God to really intervene in my life. And what yeah. happened in that service? So before um, I was anointed, Pastor Danny explained to me the seriousness of it yeah. and that I was really to search my heart mm-hmm. and, you know, put away all sin. Mm-hmm. I had to change some things in my life. I was wow. living with uh, my boyfriend or fiance and I'd been with him for nine years and we bought a house together and I moved out and it was a big thing for me to do having nine years with someone and moving out because we weren't married yet because you were convicted that Mm. that wasn't the right thing to do yeah that was it and so So this is serious life-changing stuff it was serious life-changing stuff so Leah at the service were you ready to say God your will yeah I'll follow it yep I I spent a lot of time in prayer before the service. I spent a lot of time searching my heart, and Mm. it was really deep. It was really hard to ask God to show me the things that I needed to give up. And there comes a time in most of our lives, right, that we have to ask those deep questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here and where am I going? And and at these critical life-challenging, soul-searching questions, it's like, Father in heaven... Yeah. I need you in my life. I need you, yeah. And that's where you came and to. And that's what I came to. So I went through this um, process, and then we had Pastor Danny, Pastor Eddie mm. Hippolyte, yep. uh, my mom, Josh, and Josh's 
um, mum and stepdad there. Yep. Yep. And we had the anointing. It was very special for me, mm. um, very emotional and very um, just – I was just an emotional mess, really. Uh, just, but it was it was wonderful. Um, so I'd been, spent three weeks in hospital, and they still hadn't seen any progress with my health. Huh. After I got anointed on the Friday, I was out of hospital on the Monday. They, H- hang on a minute. So you were in hospital for three weeks, no improvement, no decline, no improvement, no. Yes. In fact, it was so bad that two days before the anointing, um, a a gastro surgeon came to see Leah to say, well, look, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be taking your bowel out. And stoma nurses came to show her how you'd be using a bag. For the rest of your life? Yes. Because once they take a large section of your bowel out, it's... Yes. Yeah. Colon. Yep. So I had two appointments with the surgeon and the stoma wow. therapist. Wow. So this is like, this is the way they're going to treatment. Yes. That's, that's then, their, that was their plan. But that God had a their, different plan. Absolutely. God and this is where you, plan. when you put your trust in God, he just... His ways are higher than our ways. So did you end up having that surgery? No, I still have all my bowel, which is great. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Leah and her bowel are still here. Yes, and um, <laughs> you realise how much you appreciate these things when you doesn't work properly. But And, and so, so let's recap. So you had the anointing service and God worked a miracle in your life. Yes, another uh, one. Another one. It's like, how many are you up to? Yeah. Who's counting? Yeah. I can't count all of them, right? No. Is that what, is that what David <laughs> says? I feel like, yeah. But... but so you had the anointing on the Friday. Yeah. On the Monday, you were out of hospital. Yes. So that's a dramatic improvement. For three weeks, the line is flat. Yes. Mm. Even maybe going down, yeah. looking mm. like grim, grim, grim. Yeah. And you got Sabbath, Sunday, Monday, you're out of hospital yeah. three days. Yeah. You're out. You're a free woman. I know. I felt amazed. I mean, I was no wow. by no means... Hundred percent better. I'm still suffering with but it, enough but, to get discharged. But enough. God just was just he just delivered again. He's just so faithful. He's just so faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Say it again. <laughs> yeah, it is. He's wow. he's just our faithful friend. Yeah. What a friend we have in Jesus. And you experienced that yourself. Now, Liz, you're smiling from ear to ear. What was going on in your mind at this point? Um, well, when Leah woke up on the Sabbath morning, she she was actually still feeling unwell. And I think it was then for me I'd surrendered all as well because for people to be in that room with yes. Leah, they had to all have the same conviction yes. of surrendering everything, wow. asking for forgiveness of sin. Mm. We were singing praises to God, so we were hey, singing, singing again. again. There yes. we go. Yes. And if you look in the in the Bible, so many times it talks about giving praise to God. You yes. know, Psalm 100 verse 5, I think it's it's just talking about wow. praising him. You and what know? does that do for your soul? What does that do for your, just, for your whole inner, inner being? It just lifts you up. It, it just it's wow. just it lifts it takes you higher. You, it takes you to to where you're meant to be. It it's takes worshiping you. our Creator God, as mm. you said before. Exactly, Creator God, and that's one thing that I've really come to know, is that there are many gods out there, and we can be deceived so easily thinking we are worshiping God, but are we worshiping the living God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the things that are, that He's made? Like that's how when on that Sabbath when Leah wasn't feeling that well in the morning, I realised. You know, that was the Sabbath day. I remember being out on the front lawn of the Sydney Adventist Hospital and Josh, her mm-hmm. fiance, had brought down her two little dogs. Oh wow. And they were running around <laughs> they were running around and Leah was still connected mm-hmm. to this drip thing that was feeding her. Mm-hmm. We used to call it Meals on Wheels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, oh, that's but, cute. But um I remember that afternoon Leah s- said, You know, Mum I'm I'm feeling all right. Wow. And I remember the, that afternoon or the next morning they ran a couple of blood tests and I remember her doctor coming around and he just, he, it was like he was shaking his head. He was going, oh, I, just don't, I just don't understand. I'm wow. thinking, well, we know what happened. We know what went on on Friday night here. Wow. And it was interesting that it was on the Sabbath day. And, I mean, that was mm. a wonderful experience too because it was, you know, a time where you rest. Yes. So Leah was resting. She'd surrendered everything. There's a lot of healing in the Sabbath as well. That's a beautiful thought. There's a lot of healing in the Sabbath, Mm. not only physical, but spiritual, emotional, social. Mm. If many many of our listeners may be isolated during the week, their family's away, they're at home, they've got the radio on. Mm. Thank God for the radio. Yes. But... To come apart and to worship our Creator God, our true, the only one true God. There's only one yes. true God. He says, 
I am the Lord and there is no other. This is what God says in the Bible. Yes. And many people go after this or that or chase this or travel to, where was it? Costa, uh, Costa Rica in search of spiritual enlightenment and all the rest. But God says, come and look for me mm. in the Bible. Yeah, he's knocking on our hearts. He wants us to open the door. Wow. And I also think that there is healing in the Sabbath, but there's also healing in surrendering to God. It's that I just felt so... It was a scary thing for me to do, but I felt so liberated when I just thought, gave everything to God. You say, God, it's all in your mm. hands now. And I knew that I was safe. Why was it scary? Because I feel like I was you, the unknown. Maybe it was Satan with his deception saying, you know, you're going to um, feel like you're holding back um, on pleasures of life. On you're losing out. Losing out. But Lose. did you lose out? No, not at not all. Not at all. He just wants to. He just. He just wants you to give all to him, so he can bless you and just be with you. And yeah. can we trust God, Leah? From from your experience, can you fully trust God? Oh, absolutely. I I wish I would have trusted him a long time ago, because I just ever since I gave my heart to God, mm. my life has just improved. Not just f- physically with my health, but just everything about my life has just gone so much like I just beyond whatever I could have imagined. Wow, because the Bible, there's a verse in the, in the Bible that says, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, mm. above all that we ask or think. Yes. Ephesians 3.20. You know the reference. Thank you. I love, I love claiming that promise. Did I quote it approximately right? Yes. yes. Check me out in the Bible, please. Get, I don't have a Bible in front of me now, but it should be in our mind. But yeah. could, could it be that your experience proves that verse to be true? Now, we're not saying that God will choose to heal every time no. we pray. And there are some people that are going through cancer. There are some people that are going through illness or prolonged serious health issues. Yep. Mm. Can, can, they, can they demand a miracle? Can they expect a miracle? Is there a difference? I think that with my illness, God didn't heal me straight away. He, I was able to come out of hospital but I've still had this journey where he's led and guided me the whole way. So he may bring healing straight away. He may be still, there may be, he's just all wisdom. He's mm. all wise and he yeah. knows what you need and when you need it. So that's what you have to surrender for. And that's the scary part yeah. because we don't lose hold of our own little yeah. ideas and thoughts and what you want to do. Yeah. But then it's so liberating and free as, as you've experienced and explained so mm. eloquently and so beautifully. We are discussing before about there's a, there's a quote that uh, Ellen White writes about, um, Lisa, maybe you can help me out, something about the way that we look back over our lives, we'll see the way that God has led us. Mm. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget the way he has led us in the past. And it does go on to say yeah. those that accept the one thing by surrendering all, yes. he'll difficulties that are on our path now will actually vanish. And I think, too, one of the things I do remember claiming with Leah was Jesus says in John, you know, above all things, he wants us to prosper and be in good health. Now, God can't lie. It's that says He says that in Numbers. Hmm. He can't lie. So if he said he wants us to prosper in being good health, that's what he wants. So yeah. And I we claim that so many times. All the time. Hmm. Leah and I would get the Bible out. We'd just claim promises. Hmm. Any, anything that related to us, we would claim. And if it's written down, it's there for the claiming. Exactly. And it's not just for you. He and, wants us to claim it. It's not just for you, Liz and Leah. That's right. It's not just for me. It's, it's, for, it's for, every, everyone. for everyone. It's for everyone. Every single one. Isn't that amazing how big God is that he says, I make a promise and it's applicable to you. Yes. Personally, the Personally. reader, the reader, yes, whoever that reader is, whether they re- read it fifty years ago, your mm. great parent, great grandparents, mm. or or um, people that lived a hundred years ago, yeah, it's there for or, everyone. It's there for everyone. Isn't that amazing? You know, we're going to go to a song, and that song's going to be "I Surrender All" by Christine Wurzen. Take a listen to these words. All to Jesus. I
Liz, you mentioned that you had an experience in, uh, was it Costa Rica? Yes. Where there was a nurse that was particularly helpful. Um, yes, there was a nurse there, but there was also um, a lady. When I came into the emergency department, once we were ushered into the actual um, emergency rooms, there was one lady that I didn't see, but she saw me, was uh-huh. watching this whole drama unfold. Now, the drama, for those of you who are just joining us, was um, Liz, your daughter Leah was in a bad way in hospital, ulcerative colitis, having some serious health challenges, and this, this person was... Seeing all this, yes, yeah, she saw it all unfold. She saw nurses racing around trying to find a vein to put yeah. um, a line in. Uh, she could see the colour of Leah. Leah was like yellow, um, and then she actually came up to me once they found a, a vein and everything. She she drew me aside, mm-hmm. and she said, "Oh, look, you need help." She said, "I can see that." She said, "Look, what I'm going to do." She said, "Now my daughter's in here with." Um, very serious appendicitis but they've just told me they were just about to wheel her in for an operation but they've told me she's all right and I can take her home she said I'm just going to take her home and I'm going to come back and help you wow and I thought well I'm not sure about this but I said well thank you very much I really appreciate your help anyway she did she came back she got all the baggage that I would just dumped in the emergency section all our bags cameras all of the things that we'd um, taken to Costa Rica. She put them in a car, and when she drove, when she drove to the emergency section, I looked outside and she brought this massive, big black car, all leather trim and everything. And I said, "Oh," she said, "Yes, I'm the consulate general from Germany." She said, "And I can speak eight different languages." She said, "Look, I can take you across the road where you can stay at the Holiday Inn." So she wow. she took me to the Holiday Inn. And she could speak Spanish fluently because we're in a Spanish-speaking country. Yes. So there she took me. She and took care of you? She took care of me. She interpreted for me. She took me into my hotel wow. room. She got a 50% discount for me. Hello. Because she was explaining to them my circumstances wow. with what had transpired in the hospital with Leah. And because she'd, been, she'd visually seen all this. So from that point in time, for that week that we were in, in the hospital, this lady was there every day wow. and look I need to say this Leah was so critically ill that she needed a blood transfusion mm-hmm. they tested me to see whether I was a match for mm-hmm. Leah which I was but they said they couldn't use any more of my blood it would be taking too much mm. and this lady was with me at the time when they were explaining it and she said oh I want to help she said I want my blood t- for Leah as well wow. so then they tested this lady and her blood was compatible as well so I remember <gasps> us sitting in the hospital both giving our blood which wow. was to save Leah his life because in a third world country they don't have blood doning sections they don't of the have hospital. A blood bank. No, not a blood bank. You've got to have like family your... or relatives, the friends. That's... And you're in a foreign country. Yes. You can only give so much of blood. Yes. And you're struggling, Leah. Yeah. Yes. And then this random yes. person yes. who happens to be the was it consulate of Germany. Of Germany. Yes. Rolls up into your life and donates blood. Yes. As you were sharing that story, that's that's amazing. That's a miracle. Absolutely, it is. And you're I in really a foreign country, to... you can't yeah. speak the language, and someone that knows eight of these <laughs> languages happens to just be a blessing in your life. Wow! Well, praise God for those providences. Providence. It's not a coincidence that you bump into people that can help you and show a bit of Jesus. Yeah, she even got Mum's bag and did all the washing for her. Oh, yes. wow. She did my washing. washing. And she contacted the Seventh-day Adventist pastor over there and had the whole church praying oh, for us. Oh, what a blessing. She was just the most amazing woman. And every day she used to visit Leah in hospital. And when I would have five spare minutes, she'd say, no, come on, you need to come and rest a while and get out of the hospital and wow. get some fresh air. And she'd walk with me around the complex what and the hospital. And mm. I just remember looking looking at her and she had like blonde, really blonde hair to her shoulders and she really did look like an angel. I really wow. believe that, I I just believe in my heart an angel was there with me. It reminded me of the story of Abraham. Wow. It reminded, when you were sharing that story, it reminded me of the Good Samaritan. Yes. Where yeah. where you were half dead, uh, Leah, and um, and this Good Samaritan came by and, mm. and, uh, and helped and took care of things and says, when I come back, I'll fix up. Yeah. Wow, that, that's real life. Yeah. Now, Leah, while we were listening to that song, you got your Bible out. Yes. And it's a beautiful Bible. Yes. And it's a large Bible. 
Because you need a large sword I for know. a spiritual warfare. Yeah, I've used yeah this large Bible for <laughs> just what it needs to be used for reading. What have and you opened? What have you opened up? I've to? opened to Philippians four verse six and seven, which I have come to love these verses mm. so much, and they've just been a huge part of my um, devotion and yeah. claiming when you're going through such things. So I'll read this to yes, you. Yes, please, please. Philippians four verse six and seven. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hmm. And I just want to say that I have that peace that wow. only God can give you when you're going through such physical distress and uh, mental distress that he can just give you that hmm. peace. Hmm. Um, and you can't get that in the world. Because you were looking for it. I was looking for it. I was looking in all the wrong places. And you'd come from a Christian home. Yeah. You'd wandered out into yeah. the big bad world. Yeah. It with, is big with, and it's bad. Yeah, without God. Without God. And then you came to fall in love with Jesus Christ, mm. your Lord and Savior, who gave his blood for you. Yes. Not just mum's blood, not just uh, this other lady's blood, but Jesus Christ died on the cross for you to make this verse true. Yeah. He gave you the peace. Yeah, he did. And that's beautiful. I love that you just wow. said that. Yes. Yeah. His blood. You know, and and it's it's kind of gruesome talking about this. You know, Jesus died on the cross. You know, and the the physical pain, but it's not that. It's not the physical. It's the it's mm. the it's more than that. It's the remission of sin. Yes. He died to set us free from mm. sin, and only the blood of Jesus Christ can do that. Yes. The old sacrificial system, mm. calves, goats. Sheep, none of those sacrifices could do. You needed the perfect Lamb of God. Yes. Mm. Praise God. Wow. Do you have another Bible verse that that uh, is your favorite? You were saying that you you're reading through the whole chapter of was it? What's your favorite book uh, in the Bible? My favorite book is Leo? Philippians, is just where we've read. But I've started to memorize Philippians two. Um, the chapter of Philippians 2. Wow. It's about, um, you know, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And it tells mm. you how he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wow. Just what we were talking about. Yeah. So just what wow. we were talking about. So that's, yeah, Philippians is one of my favorite books of the Bible. I really wow. love it. Wow. Because he just, the way Jesus' life, um, how he made himself of no reputation mm. and how we should be with others in our lives, how we should humble ourselves and, um, mm. Be a servant to others. Yeah, and then Jesus will, what does it say? Lift us up. Mm. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and, and he, he will lift, lift you up. up. Yes. Mm. I mean, and you've found that to be true, right? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yes. Yes. And I, one of the things, one of the verses that I think that means so much to me is taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. Um, it's like anything. You can be held out a piece of fruit or something, and unless you've actually tasted it, how yeah. would you know what yeah. it tastes like, whether it's good or not? So from my, from my experience, it is an individual experience. Mm. It's a walk that you need to be able to walk hand in hand with Jesus. He has his hand out there ready yes. and waiting to take you home. Mm. And this is a journey going home. We're all on this path. Mm. And it, and. Yeah. And the path that we were on is is a heavenly path. It's a narrow path. It can be hard. It can be difficult. But I think the times that we're living in are really a reflection of the Word of God in the in last day events and how wonderful it is that we've been brought into out of darkness into His marvelous light. Mm. That through darkness mm -hmm. there is light yes. because Jesus is the light of the world yes. and He wants us to be shining lights for Him yes. to herald in His second coming. And I'm really grateful to God for giving us this experience that we can share it with others. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, isn't it beautiful? And as you were saying that, um, Liz, I was just thinking, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. And even though you're going through this dark time, and we all go through dark times sooner or later, Yes. Some of us uh, have gone through, um, you know, similar experiences of, of just total despair and yeah. no hope. But mm. yet there's still Jesus holding out his hand, yes. inviting us to say, you know what, come to me and I'll give you peace. He promises us peace. Yes. Um, just as you read in that Bible verse. And he, he does that for each of us. Yes. Uh, it may not be physical healing immediately. Yeah. Um, but in your case, um, it, it helped. 
and even the doctors were shaking their heads saying, yeah. how can this be? Yes. You've been um, in the hospital for three weeks, two or three weeks, no improvement. Yeah, no. And after a prayer and a soul searching, which is what you went through, not only you but mum yeah. and, and the pastors and the elders that mm. came, to really say, you know what, God, whatever your will, yeah. whatever your will. Yeah, I had to say that and believe, mm. and I really honestly said, God, I'm just giving you everything I have and whatever, if you see fit to heal yeah, me, yeah. I accept that. But if you don't, I had to accept it as well. So that happened a few years ago now. Yeah. So tell us what's happening in your life now. So now I've been baptized. I uh, got baptized on the 9th of May, 2015. So nearly a year yeah, ago now. Oh, wow. And that was really special for me to do that, to really, as a public declaration, give my life to Christ in front of all my friends and family. Yeah, I was there at your baptism. You were. That was beautiful. That was one of the nicest baptisms I've seen. Um, it was on Lake, in Lake Macquarie. Yes. It was really... Oh, just- it was really beautiful. Really I love nice. I love that. And now um, just being part of the church has just been amazing for me. Yeah. Having a church family. Yeah. yeah. Love Sabbath. Sabbath is such a blessing to me. I just look forward to it. It's my favorite day of the week by far. Wow. Um, even Friday preparation, I just get excited to prepare for Sabbath. Um, wow. Just in my home, getting everything sorted. Oh, I just love it. And, um, yeah, being a part of my church and being involved, being an active member has yep. been so important for my learning, growing experience in God. What yeah. does it mean being active? So do you just uh, have your own Christianity at home or what, is it, what does it mean to be active? Um, well, one of the things that I do... Um, Every Thursday morning I have Bible studies with a group of ladies mm. and that's kept me active because it draws me to the Word of God and be, to be able to share it. Wow. And I've also been fortunate enough to take a lady through Bible studies and see her baptised just recently, wow, about three weeks exciting. ago. That's exciting. And praise I, the Lord. Yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. It's <laughs> been amazing. And wow. also too, I've been able, uh, on Sabbath morning, I help with the children in um, in a pre-kindy class oh, at so church. Teaching so teaching little kids. Teaching children. And Beautiful. that's been wonderful because I'm able to take my grandchildren to Sabbath school and wow. it's just awesome. And they tell me they love Jesus. And I tell you what, out of the mouth of babes, it brings so much joy and and. Oh, wow. to my heart. I just sing praises. It's just wow. awesome. I mean, it's good that, that you can see the change in your daughter, but also your granddaughter or grandson. Uh, two granddaughters and one grandson. Oh, so you got both. you got got uh, wow, yeah. three grandchildren yes. at this point. Yes. And for for that joy, for them to realize that, you know what, Jesus is their saviour too. Mm. But it's had a ripple effect because um, Sam, Leah's brother, was baptised on the 12th of December last year, 2015, wow. with with his friend Jade. Uh-huh. Um, so it nice. has had a ripple effect. So I really believe when you when you're sincere and you give your heart to the Lord, He wants you to do a work. You've joined Him. You're yes. a disciple, yes. and you're to go forward and preach the everlasting gospel. And wow. that is what we're here to do. That is why we're here on this earth to preach the everlasting gospel mm. to your family. To your Mm. friends, to those close around you? Be witnesses in your Mm. home. Um, Most importantly, to those who are, yeah, everyone. But in your home, it starts. And you must be the best example you can be. Um, And especially for those who have not yet made the decision for God, Mm. um, just to show them as much as you can the love of God. Mm. Um, And just, yeah, it's just been amazing to be able to have my brother baptized and his girlfriend, Jade, and wow. have them join the church. And just it's really um, exciting to have that, to see that and to see how it's really turned out for God just knew this all along. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, oh, wow, wow God, you were so good. But see, if, even if it, looking back, even if you went through what, what you're going through, what you went through, to see the way that God has led you, to see where you are now, it's like, was it worth it? Oh. Absolutely. I have to say it because I'm so glad that this happened to me because if I didn't, if this didn't happen to me in Costa Rica, I'd still be following some other guru guy who was leading me down the wrong path, down the wrong path and still mm. be unhappy. Yeah. But you have found Jesus Christ I as your Jesus. Lord and Savior. Yes. And that's beautiful that now you see your immediate family, your close friends and family are, are joining that and also leads to have someone else Go through a study of the Bible to learn more about God, to learn more about Jesus. Yes. And we want to extend this invitation to our listeners. Yes. If you are listening to this, and we know you are, we encourage you to dig deeper in the Bible. What would you say to someone, Leah, that is 
that is going through some issues, health issues or otherwise, mm. can they trust the Bible? Oh, yes. There's nothing else to trust. Do not put your trust in any human being. Mm. That's what I've learned. Do not put your trust in any man, um, in any doctor. You know, God can use people, but yeah. if you look to him first, he will guide you. To the right people. To the right people. Wow. Exactly. I put my faith and trust in, in a human being and, and exalted them and put them on a pedestal. And God really showed me that that doesn't work. Yeah. And he brought me to that in fact. Yeah. Liz, what would you say to someone that is is looking for answers in life? Look, it's a dark place out there without God in your mm. life. And if you really have looked, and, and I think everybody does, there's a real emptiness in all of us mm. unless we reach out to Christ and really not only know, not only know about him, but know him, to open up the word of God, prayerfully mm. study. And do remember that we mm. are in a spiritual warfare. Satan yes. hates the fact that you are looking, that you're searching. But just remember, Christ is stronger. And he has said he'll never leave you or forsake you. He will, he will guide you. He mm. will direct you. Just believe. Believe in his word. Yeah. Trust in the promises. And he will deliver you. Wow. Well, Liz and Leah, I'd like to thank you very, very much for sharing your story. It's been a highlight to listen to the way that God has led in your life from poor health to extremely poor health to an amazing relationship with Jesus Christ and on the way to healing. Mm. Liz and Leah, would you offer a prayer for our listeners, please? Our loving Father in heaven, you are so wonderful. You have called us out of darkness into your marvellous light. You want to lead us, Lord, and you are in heaven preparing a beautiful mm. place to take us home. What a joy it will be when you return with the reward for those that are faithful. I pray, dear Lord, that those are listening, that they will give their hearts to you, that they will turn to you, the Son of Righteousness, who has healing in his wings, and bring us close to you, Lord, so that we can go home and spend eternity with our wonderful Lord and Saviour is my prayer prayer in Jesus name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Dear gracious heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for being able to share the story you have given me, Lord. Thank you that I can come here today and speak to those who are listening. Mm. I just pray, Lord, that whoever's listening with whatever needs um, they have whatever troubles they're going through, they can look to you, Lord, and you can guide them. And if they only just reach out and, and trust in your word and your promises that you will be able to guide them into a deeper relationship with you. Please bless all those that are um, here with us listening right now. I pray that you'll be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, amen. amen. Liz and Leah, thank you again. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Join us again next time for Life Learnings as we bring to you another life story. You've been listening to a production of 3ABN Australia Radio.